North Carolina native Luke Combs has hit it big time. He's already a major country star, but now he gets to play Bank of America Stadium. His big tour makes a stop at the bank coming up July 15th of next year, 2023. As part of the tour, he'll visit three continents and 16 countries. While the Charlotte concert is 10 months away, tickets go on sale next week. September the 16th, Combs is also up for three nominations at the annual CMA Awards. Supplies are unloaded. Stages and speakers are set up for the first day of the North Carolina Folk Festival. It starts at 5 p.m. in downtown Greensboro. Over the weekend, dozens of performers will take the stage, including Kannapolis native George Clinton and the Parliament Funkadelic. That should be a good time. 6.59, enjoying the sunrise on this Friday morning. TGIF, the most news in the Carolinas, continues right now. City News starts now. Darnold, he's going to keep it himself. A Darnold touchdown run. McCaffrey is superhuman. I know we're talking about super Cam, but this team is so different when number 22 is on the field, CMC. He's a special player. Just show me. I want to freaking see hits. I want to see the freaking ball out. I want to see attack these guys. Let's go, D. Oh, if that D. doesn't get you excited, Somebody I get don't know what does. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. The 7 o'clock hour of Queen City News Now this Friday morning. I'm Jason Harper. And I'm Ann Wyatt Little. We're glad you're waking up with us. Meteorologist Ted Faton is here, keeping an eye on our weekend forecast. But yeah. we're also looking ahead to the Panthers game. We've got Julian Sador and Brett Baldeck live at Bank of America Stadium. There they are. We will check in with the guys a little bit later on this hour. Uh, they are loving their assignments this morning. Mm -hmm. Lucky, lucky to be out there. And it's a nice, quiet start to the day. The bank could look a lot different coming the next few days. We know it's going to be a packed house, not just for Panthers game on Sunday, Charlotte FC Saturday, taking a live look over Bank of America Stadium where we have a nice, beautiful sunrise and some of that passing cloud cover that's going to be building as we head into the weekend. Now, I know I've been talking about the rain chances, the storm chances, and the question everybody's asking, what's the forecast come game day and get kickoff for that Panthers game? So here's what I'm looking at. By the time we get to 1 o'clock on Sunday, I'm thinking 77 degrees. Some scattered showers still sticking around. I'm also forecasting a win for the Panthers, though. They're going to be winning that 28-14 against the Browns. You heard it here first. Now, waking up this morning, mostly clear over Charlotte, satellite and radar, keeping a lot of those storms south towards Charleston, where they had a severe thunderstorm warning earlier. That cloud cover starting to build towards Columbia as well. Let's put the clock into motion. Friday afternoon, a mix of sun and clouds and a pesky shower developing north of I-40. Heading into your Friday evening and Saturday morning, 2 a.m., we start getting some moderate rain for our southern counties towards York County, heading up I-77 into the Queen City. But then by 7 a.m., we have most of the heavy downpours, the yellow, the orange that you're seeing west of I-77. And then we have more widespread heavy showers and downpours that come into play by Saturday noon. And that's really what your weekend's starting to look like. And we'll catch a little bit of a break as we head into Sunday. We'll talk more about the forecast that you need to know heading out the door for Friday and another glimpse at the events happening this weekend coming up in the next five minutes. Guys, also be sure to download that Pinpoint Weather app where you can get alerts all weekend long in terms of the showers, the storms that will be in your area. It's free to download in your App Store or Google Play. Now, let's get a check of those roadways, guys. All right, thank you, Ted. Interstates and most other major roadways are in pretty good shape so far this morning. We just have a couple of things to warn you about if you're getting ready to leave the house this morning. Watch for slowing down on the Brookshire Freeway uptown where a crash is reported on the northbound side. This is just before I-77. And we have two crashes to warn you about on Sugar Creek Road. One is in the clearing stages on the northbound side of Sugar Creek at I-85. So that's backing up traffic from about Hidden Valley Road and Sugar Creek Road is closed north of Harris Boulevard at David Cox Road. This is all because of a crash that happened at nine o'clock last night, but the crash brought down utility lines. So that is taking some time to get those repairs underway. Their a detour is posted. We'll let you know when that clears up. Sad, 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 shocked. We just didn't think this woman was ever going to die. 
Queen Elizabeth II passed away at 96 years old yesterday. You're taking a live look at Buckingham Palace, where the Queen, uh, Westminster Abbey, actually right there, where the Queen served for more than 70 years. Supporters have been visiting uh, the castle since the news was announced. Thousands are expected to leave messages in books of condolences. Now we're taking a live look at the White House in Washington, D.C. President Biden is ordering flags to be flown at half staff at the White House and federal buildings. This will happen until the Queen's funeral. With the passing of the Queen, Britain has plunged into a period of national mourning and at least 10 days of solemn ceremony. From the moment of the Queen's death, Charles officially became king. He's expected to speak with Prime Minister Liz Truss and record a TV address to the nation, which will be broadcasted later today. Flags on official buildings are flying half-staff, while flags in London's Parliament Square and the Mall are dressed in black crepe and tassels. Today, the Queen's coffin will be moved to the ballroom at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. The following days will consist of gun salutes, bells ringing, and millions gathering to pay tribute. On Saturday, September 17th, Queen Elizabeth II will be given her official send-off at Westminster Abbey. English Premier League officials are postponing all games this weekend as a mark of respect following the death of the Queen. For more details on the Queen and her legacy, you can go to our website, qcnews.com. Here back home, Americans will soon honor the thousands of lives lost 21 years ago on September the 11th. That solemn day is this Sunday. President Biden will mark the occasion by delivering remarks and laying a wreath at the Pentagon. Sunday will commemorate the 2001 terrorist attacks when hijackers took control of commercial planes crashing into New York's World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and a field in Pennsylvania. Nearly 3,000 people died in those attacks. First Lady Jill Biden will be speaking Sunday at the Flight 93 National Memorial Observance in Pennsylvania. Vice President Harris will go to New York City for a commemoration ceremony. Coming up in our 8 o'clock hour, we're going to speak with someone who was in one of the towers on that tragic morning. John Sequera will uh, be sharing his experience and the impact that this day has had on his entire life. That interview is coming up at 8:12. Former classmates of the teacher and mother who was kidnapped and killed in Memphis laced up their sneakers this morning in the Queen City. They are running in remembrance of Eliza Fletcher, or Liza, as most of her friends called her. They all gathered near Queen's University at 5 this morning to finish Fletcher's run home. There was also a moment of silence. Coming up in our next half hour, we'll hear from some of those runners about why they're not only running for Liza, but also for women all over. We are coming up on 707, a pretty pleasant start to our Friday morning, but we've got changes in our forecast. Yeah, Friday finishes off the work week pleasantly while we have those clouds build throughout the day, and then the rain chances impact your overnight and into Saturday. 67 degrees this morning right now around the Queen City, northeast wind at 9 miles per hour. We are sitting at 67 for Charlotte, 64, Lincolnton, Gastonia, Concord, Monroe, 64 out towards Rockingham, upper 50s for Wagesboro, which matches is Jefferson to start at 59 degrees, 58 for Boone and heading out the door, a refreshing mild start with sunglasses, sunscreen, water and coffee on tap for the to do list and what you need to have or heading outside. Overall, getting the kids ready for the bus stop. A quick look at that bus stop forecast. Upper 60s with mostly clear conditions to start your day. Coming home from school for dismissal, you're looking more in the way of the lower 80s with a mix of sun and clouds. The clouds build later on as you head into the weekend. That low pressure system churning over the Gulf of Mexico, kicking moisture into the Carolinas. We're going to start getting into the upper 70s by lunchtime. Highs peak in the low 80s today. By 6 o'clock, you're looking at mostly cloudy skies leveled off in the upper 70s, low 80s. Your forecast calls for just slightly below normal temperatures with light winds, mix of sun and clouds before the cloud cover really takes over and the rain chances arrive this weekend. We'll time it out coming up here in the next 10 minutes. Guys. Sounds good, Ted. Thank you very much. Queen City News, as we've been saying, is the official station of the Carolina Panthers. The list for this year's team captains is out, and there's a lot of familiar faces. The eight guys that will wear C on their jersey include Christian McCaffrey, who was captain for the fourth year, Shaq Thompson for the third time, 
Taylor Moten, Dante Jackson, Brian Burns, and J.J. Jansen are all making their second appearance. And then the final two spots going to Jeremy Chin and Baker Mayfield. Since we're talking about Mayfield, let's talk about the impact he's having on jersey sales. We've seen a lot more Mayfield jerseys here in the Queen City. Yeah, his jersey's quickly selling out following the announcement of the August trade. And at one point, even Mayfield's number six Panthers jersey uh, was in the top ten on the NFLshop.com. Those who don't have tickets to the upcoming game on Sunday at Bank of America Stadium won't have to go very far to find a comfortable place to watch the action. Bars are opening their doors early on Sunday to welcome in football fans. Queen City News reporter Brett Baldick is live in Uptown this morning with the stadium in the background there talking about how local businesses are prepping for the game. Brett, good morning. Good morning, Jason and Ann Wyatt. So you would think since it's a home game, everyone would be inside Bank of America Stadium on Sunday and nowhere else. But bars and restaurants and uh, the people who work there tell me that they actually are busy on home games, just as busy as they are when the Panthers are playing away. We stopped at Dilwer Dilworth Neighborhood Grill, and they're going to be having a shuttle running on Sunday. Of course, they're located a straight shot down from Bank of America Stadium on Moorhead Street. Uh, that same shuttle will bring the fans back to the restaurant following the game. Now, the uh, general manager and bar managers expect hundreds of people to watch the game in the bar and to prepare. They've placed a mega beer order. We're rolling them in. We just made another order because on Saturday we went through 30 cases of McUltra alone, like cases. And so just we are constantly during football season, like every week, just ordering and ordering. So last Saturday, what she was talking about, that was the uh, college football games that people came in to watch and they had to order all that beer for that. And they tell me that they had 500 people alone at Dilworth Neighborhood Grill for those college games. So you can wow. only imagine how many people will be there on Sunday uh, to watch the Panthers in their first game against uh, Cleveland. Back to you guys. Get in line early for a good seat up at the bar to watch there, Brett. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll check in with you a little bit later on. 7-10 now, switching gears, making the ultimate sacrifice. How veterans and first responders plan to honor those who died on September the 11th, 2001. Plus, Hurricane Earl heads toward Bermuda, but will it affect us here in the Queen City? Coming up, Ted will bring us the latest update when it comes to tracking the tropics. You're watching Carolina's own Queen City News Now. The official home of the Carolina Panthers, the most news in the Carolinas continues right after the break.
All right, 713 right now. We've got a full look at your forecast coming up. We're looking at Bank of America Stadium, the home of the Carolina Panthers, and it might be a sloppy weekend. We'll get that forecast coming up in about four minutes. For people who live hours away from Charlotte, there's a new way for them to get into the Queen City and watch home games. NC by Train is hosting special football trains to carry fans back and forth. On game day, Piedmont Train 73 will arrive at 940 in the morning. That gives fans plenty of time to tailgate before kickoff. There will be six football trains this season. The first leaves the station this Sunday for the game against the Browns. Well, no matter how you get to Uptown this Sunday, one thing is for sure, it's going to be buzzing with excitement. That's right. Queen City News anchor Julian Sudor is live outside of Bank of America this morning. And Julian, it is quiet there right now, but that is certainly not going to be the case this weekend. Not at all. This Sunday, it's going to be packed. But look, the way last season ended, there weren't many fans of the black and blue coming through these gates behind me. But it is a new year, a new season. We got a new quarterback in Baker Mayfield. And yes, this place is going to be packed this Sunday with fans of the black and blue, but also some Cleveland Browns fans. Apparently, the Browns have a group called the Browns Backers. It's a national group with a chapter here in Charlotte. And they're going all out this weekend. They have a weekend full of events. I spoke to one member of the group who says they believe they can actually turn Bank of America into a Browns-type home game for them. Take a listen. Coming up for this game, we've got, you know, a, uh, a pregame kickoff going on. We've got the uh, game day tailgate. We bought a section of, like, 200 seats. So, I mean, there's plenty of people. <laughs> so, if there was any doubt of whether or not Browns fans were going to be inside of Bank of America Stadium, that's out the window. 200 at least will be there. At least. And, you know, I'm going to make an early prediction and say it's going to look like a Cleveland home game, not a Carolina one. So obviously we're not going to let that happen. This place is going to be packed with fans of the black and blue. But listen, when I was speaking with Evan, he obviously knows Baker Mayfield really well, being a lifelong Cleveland Browns fan. And he says Baker may be the key for us making the playoffs. He says he's a gutsy quarterback and he thinks he's the perfect addition to the team. And again, of course, we're going to have to pack Bank of America Stadium and get the win against the Cleveland Browns this Sunday. I have no doubt. Live outside of Bank of America Stadium, Julian Sador. Queen City News. Guys, back to you. Oh, it sounds like Evan is saying there might be a chance. Some fighting words there. Yeah, I like it there. All right, thank you very much, Julian. Look forward to y'all's reports uh, for the rest of the morning. Appreciate that. It is 716. Oh, time for now for your forecast. We want to take you live here to Bermuda. Or Nope, we are not going to Bermuda. If only you're looking at the Queen City right now. Meteorologist Ted Faton tracking what we can expect weather-wise. Yeah, we finished off the work week with some pleasant conditions as we see over our tower camera. The silhouette of the Queen City in the distance with a beautiful sunrise. But we are going to have those rain chances increase heading into the weekend. We're going to get a little bit more in the way of those heavy downpours and those storm chances that that could impact Charlotte FC and a little bit of the Panthers game as well. So satellite and radar for right now is mostly clear around the Queen City. While we have more of those storms focused south towards Charleston, what happens is the moisture is going to be pumping into the area from a low pressure system over the Gulf of Mexico giving us the abundant amount of moisture for the Carolinas. You see that in our satellite water vapor imagery as the moisture kind of pushes north. That's going to come first in the way of cloud cover, and then those clouds will start to deliver some of those pesky showers overnight and into your Saturday. So Friday, 3 p.m., we have the isolated showers along that I-40 corridor. We stay mostly dry with a mix of sun and clouds around the Queen City and temperatures in the low 80s, warming up into your uh, heading into your evening hours. We cool off into the 70s with by 3 a.m. Saturday, Today we have the moderate shower south. That's going to be south of I-85 towards Chester, Rock Hill, Lancaster. And then we get more in the way of the heavy downpours west of I-77, south of I-40 as you head into the 7 o'clock hour. By the time we get to 11.45 noon, you're looking at more widespread heavy downpours impacting your midday for Saturday before tapering off into Saturday evening. We're still going to hold on to that wet weather heading into Sunday with some pesky showers and storms sticking around. Overall, I think our future rainfall gives us anywhere between a half an inch of rain or towards an inch of rain with some areas isolated seeing more than that where those heavy downpours start to train behind each other. And taking a look at your Charlotte FC forecast as they host NYC FC kickoff in the low 70s at one o'clock for Bank of America Stadium through halftime and the second half we're going to get into the mid 70s and then 24 hours later getting ready for the Panthers to host the Browns 
We're in the 70s throughout that tailgate forecast. Kick off 1 o'clock. I think we have some pesky showers sticking around. 77 degrees 1 o'clock as the Browns will take on the Panthers. And I think the Panthers come home with the win. Temperatures right now in the upper 60s for Charlotte is coming in at 67 degrees. 64 Concord, Albemarle, Rockingham, Monroe, Gastonia, upper 50s for our mountain counties. We peak in the low 30s today, so a high of 83. And overall, overnight lows in the upper 60s while we settle off into the upper 70s for Saturday. We're back in the 80s through early next week with those storm chances tapering off. Let's get a check of those roadways here at 718. Jason? All right, let's do it, Ted. Thank you, sir. Your pinpoint traffic right now. Interstates looking good across the Queen City region. As we look here at these DOT cameras showing traffic moving without any delays through all of the areas of I-77 and I-85. Now, the slowing that you see here on the map, uh, let's get that map for you. It is typical for this time on a Friday morning. There we go. Now we're looking at it's green as you look around. A little bit of red and yellow, but like we said, uh, this is typical for this time of morning. Let's take a look at your drive times. If you are down in South Carolina making your way to Uptown, 11 minutes. Over in Gaston County, 11 minutes as well to get to Belmont. And over in Mint Hill, it's going to take you 18 minutes to make your way over to Pineville. We'll get another look at traffic around 730. We are just 13 days away from the official start of fall, but we've already seen the return of pumpkin spice. I know you like the lattes, but what about pumpkin spice ramen? Mm. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Cup noodles, they, uh, they say that they're bringing pumpkin spice flavored ramen back. I didn't even know they came out in the first place. Uh -huh. Unlike the original cup noodles, this fall inspired creation, it's saucy. It's not soupy. It's made with a special pumpkin seasoning that's uh, mm. supposed to be a blend of sweet, savory, and spicy. Add water, pop it in the microwave for four minutes, and you've got a taste <laughs> of fall. There you uh, go. What do you think? I, yeah, the only way I want taste of fall in a cup is with uh, pumpkin beer. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I, I would yeah. like anything. Would I try it? I like things pumpkin. I love ramen noodles. I would try it. Yeah, yeah I, I love ramen noodles. Would, I just don't know how I feel of cup noodles like yeah. the microwave four minute thing yeah. like if you went to a restaurant like a ramen and they said hey we have a, a pumpkin flavor or whatnot probably good. i would trust that culinary yeah. expert i'm going to the store today that will not be in my shopping cart <laughs> you're not going to find that in no, a microwave no, near ann wyatt no 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 i am curious though but I there's literally everything pumpkin spice flavored yeah, out there, there right now. Oh, man. So. Listen, go fill up <laughs> your... Indulge, enjoy. Go indulge in your pumpkin coffee or whatever this morning. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back.
724. Welcome back on this Friday morning. Charlotte FC has taken on New York City one more time. Last time they played, the Crown was able to defeat New York in a 3-1 to one win. There are only a couple more chances to see the team in action with only five matches left. There's tomorrow's New York match. Then they'll play in Chicago October the 1st. Next, they'll face Philly and Columbus before closing out the regular season by trying to take one last bite out of the Big Apple on October the 9th. It'll be here before you know it. For the land of the free and the home of the Check out those pipes. Our very own Jason Harper was on the diamond yesterday at Truist Field. Jason got the game underway with the national anthem, and he did a fabulous job. Last night was a big collaboration between Queen City News and the Knights for Monarch Night. That's a new show that you can check out on Fox Charlotte this Sunday after the game. Then it runs regularly through the fall on Tuesdays at 9 o'clock. Last night was a Queen City News collab. Our whole morning team was out there, and Julian Sudor took to the mound his first time throwing out the first pitch, the windup, and the pitch, and we think it's a strike. And uh, good for him, man. He was talking all day about being nervous and warming up and having sweaty hands, and he just didn't want to throw it in the dirt or over the over the catcher. So uh, I think he did a great job. He yeah. did a great job, and so did you. That was such a fun night being out there. And this is this is really where things get <laughs> this interesting. This is our favorite part, right? Oh so yeah. So Ted and Julian raced Homer. Yeah. And, what, what was uh, this called, Ted? This was called the Pony Hop. The Pony Hop. The Pony Hop. Yeah. And Julian Steed was named Bullet. Mine was named Jefferson. Okay. Yeah. And you're racing against Homer. Yeah. Who gets off the line early. Of course I, he does. I he's see Homer. that. And that overzealous. Oh! I don't know how you didn't break an ankle, man. S secured the hat. I don't, I don't know. I think there was some good cushion on, on those. But oh, what you man. don't see is Julian hits the block around the, around the cone and helps me uh, beeline it for, for the big three. Ted wins. We'll show the rest of that video <laughs> a little bit later on yeah. this morning. Uh, Ted, a mixed bag for the forecast this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. For that grilling forecast, do it today. We do have some pleasant conditions this evening. 80s into the 70s mostly dry and clouds will build into the overnight hours before showers start to creep in for the weekend. We'll talk more about that and have your forecast coming up. You're watching Carolina's own Queen City News Now.